Okay, hello everyone and welcome to Supporting English Language Learners with Clicker. Uh, my name is Phil and I'm joined by Louise Dawson, who's an independent consultant uh, supporting schools with their inclusive provisions across the Middle East. Now, Louise has 23 years experience education working in the UK, Hong Kong and the Middle East. And before her current consulting role, uh, Louise held roles leading inclusion at Jumeirah College, King's School Albasha and Wellington International School. Now, I asked Louise uh, to join us uh, on this presentation because international schools typically have very high levels of students who don't speak English as their first language. Uh, Louise is an expert in understanding both the specific challenges faced by English language learners and how those challenges can be successfully overcome. Now, throughout this webinar, um, if you've got any questions, there is a there's a question window, chat window. You you can put your questions in there and my colleague Katie is going to be answering questions and we'll try and get to all of those during the course of uh, the web demonstration um, or we'll answer them very very shortly afterwards. Okay so Louise welcome to the webinar. Good evening Phil thank you very much for inviting me pleasure to be here. <laughs> Great so um, look could you start just by outlining some of the specific challenges which affect the literacy development of uh, English language learners? Yeah absolutely highlighting my own experiences and those barriers discussed when I talked to my peers um, the points most commonly raised were um, gaining that emergency vocabulary to take um, to help students take their first steps in English. So by emergency, we don't mean literally the emergency words, we mean the basic high frequency vocabulary that a child needs to get by in English. Then we um, thought about phonics, blending, pronunciation, modeling language and sentence structure, both in the spoken and in the written methods. Moving on to progressing to grammar challenges, English is so difficult. Expanding general vocabulary and topic specific vocabulary as we move into topics like science and geography, etc. That's great. Now we're going to look at how Clicker can help in these areas shortly. But are there any implications for teachers and teaching assistants in schools we need to particularly consider? Yeah, I think differentiation is one of the hardest things. Um, English additional language provision can typically be very resource heavy and requires a wide array of differentiation. These challenges then translate to um, a high need of teacher time requirement, but also sometimes additional adult cost. OK, great. So, look, um, we're, we're we're talking about clicker um, in this presentation. And if you're not familiar with Clicker, there's lots of information on our website. So head over to www.cricksoft.com if you want a bit more background information on it. But basically, Clicker is um, a, a, a complete literacy support tool. So reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And age appropriate from, I'd say, about three years old, typically up to about uh, sort of 11 year olds, at which point we would tend to transition um, students onto our Docs plot. Doc, doc, plus product which is aimed at secondary so if we just click on the clicker link here Clicker's kind of split into Clicker 8, which is a fully featured program uh, for Windows or Mac computers. And we also have our Clicker apps, the first of which is the Clicker Writer. So that supports the writing aspects of Clicker on iPads and Chromebooks. And we've also got Clicker Books coming out shortly and more apps planned later in the year. So the, the sort of medium term aim is to get lots of um, the aspects of Clicker um, on to, uh, available on iPads and Chromebooks as well. OK, so. Anyway, I'm just going to close the website down now. And what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking about uh, a child that has little or no English taking their um, very first steps. So when, you, when you're in Clicker, there's a folder icon here and you can jump straight into learning grids. Now, Learning Grids is this amazing um, bank of resources, a library of resources. Um, at the moment, there's almost 3,000. There's 2,962 2, resources on our UK site at the moment, and they are uh, scattered across uh, lots of different subject areas. So we've got English, math, science, geography, history. And then within those areas, if we go into English, we have um, our different categories. 
Uh, and then within those categories, we have our different topics. And uh, you might notice that down the bottom there, we have a topic specifically designed um, to help English language learners called New to English. So that's where I'm going to start. And um, in this first activity that we're going to have a look at, we're going to look at School Explore. So let me just um, show you this. And I'll be showing you the activities and then and then Louise will be able to comment on, on how she sees these being used or the advantages of these particular activities. So in this one, it's very, very straightforward. As I move my mouse around, you can see the mouse changes um, to a smiley face when there's something that I can click on. And it also um, pops up some, some words there. And if I click on that, dining room, you can hear those words spoken and you can listen again if you wish here. Dining room. And when you do it a second time, it actually highlights those words as it speaks. So let's do one more. Classroom. Okay. Classroom. Great. I think that's a really good place to start. I think I like this when I have a student in the classroom who um, needs to do something independently because maybe as a teacher I'm delivering to the other learners and the child isn't able to access what I'm delivering so I can place the child on this activity because it's very simple and very easy to navigate on their own regardless of age. Yeah, I mean, that is a problem. I, I, well, I'm talking to teachers on a, on, a, on a daily basis and they often say, you know, it is, it is, can be very difficult when a new child comes to the class that has no English at all. OK, well, look, a, a follow on activity from that, if we put it back to, to learning grids here. So a follow on activity from that is this talk set. OK, and this is what we call a listen and say activity. So the front screen is a practice screen. I'm just going to head straight into the activity. and I'm going to click on this picture classroom and I'm listening to the word classroom then I'm going to click on my microphone and then I've got a pop-up sound recorder now which allows me to practice so I'm going to say classroom okay and then when I click done you can see the icons change because it's got a recording on and then I can obviously go to the next screen Oh, that's really good. Thank you, Phil. Um, I think I like this activity because it supports learners to gain that speech confidence. Um, when children start to learn a language, often we find a silent period. We call it the silent period when a student is taking information in and learning. We often find that students are embarrassed to practice speaking out loud, especially when there's an adult present. And with this activity, we find that embarrassment is reduced and out loud practice increases. I also like this activity because you're able to record your own speech, but the computerized program actually delivers uh, you know, human speech. It's not a computerized voice, which I think is really great when we're modeling language development. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Louise. We will come on to listen to the computerized voice in later activities. But yeah, these new to English resources actually have a voice actor um, recording the speech. And at the end, there is a summary that both the, the child and the teacher can use to compare what the computer said. Classroom. To their own recordings. Classroom. OK. okay and so. Um, now I'm just going to close, let me just close those two down. Now there are lots and lots of other activities in the New to English series. I mean, you, we could do a presentation just purely um, on New to English. Um, but the next thing that you mentioned, Louise, you were talking about phonics. So um, Clicker is really, really good for supporting phonics, but um, the, the, what the approach that you might take in the UK to teaching phonics might be slightly different to the approach you might take in North America. So um, we have on our learning grid site a separate section with localized activities. And you'll see that our first subject English, when we cl click on the North America site, goes to English language arts. OK, and then when we click on that um, subject area, we have a category sounds and letters here. OK, so let's open that one. And there's lots of lots of activities here. And what I'm going to open up is something called short A word families, which is something called a clicker board. OK, so in this clicker board, it's laid out a little bit like a mind map. But the purpose of this one is for us to look at the initial sound and then try and put that together with the at. So we're going to go r at rat. OK, and at that point, I can put my rat into there and then I can go f at fat and put that in there and then at the end 
um, the teacher could perhaps ask the child to read out all the words on the right hand side, or if they wanted to actually read the, the, the sort of the, the separate sections of them, the, the child could actually go rat, at rat, for, uh, fat, etc. Oh, that's really good. So I think in North America, they call this structure onset and rhyme, as opposed to the UK's initial phoneme one at a time. Onset and rhyming um, builds that learner awareness of the common parts to a word. Um, this exposes learners to word families, lays a foundation for automation in decoding, and helps with that spelling and writing, all of those skills being gr grown slowly and carefully. OK, so thank you for that. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the UK site and we're going to have a look at um, the more sort of letters and sounds approach that you might take um, developing phonic skills in, in UK schools. So let's have a look at sounds and letters here. OK, so we've got lots of um, again, lots and lots of resources. But the one that I'm going to start with is phoneme sounds. And this is a talk set. And here we're looking at the initial sound followed by words beginning with that sound. So we can listen and we, we can, of course, use that, um, use the microphone to practice. And then we can listen again. Sun. And we can practice lots of words that begin with that initial s sound. So this is just one um, of a whole set of activities which helps students to raise their phonemic awareness. Um, this is the ability to understand how words are formed and to break them down into those individual sounds. Um, understanding the sounds in words not only helps them with reading, but again, similar to the North American one, the spelling and writing enable that to grow. Great. OK, so look, now I think it's time to move on to looking at um, modelling language and sentence structure. OK, so to do this, what we're going to do is look at some of our of our writing clicker set. So a clicker set is any sort of resource that works within clicker. And if I just clear the current search and we go back into English, um, let's imagine we're doing some some writing about ourselves. So I'm going to choose um, about me here. And you can see there are different types of activities. So the simplest activity, which is the one we're going to look at first, is called a sentence set, the simplest writing activity, that is. And we can filter by sentence sets by ticking these boxes on the side. And then we're going to perhaps look at, um, look at some more complex, uh, maybe a connect set afterwards. But if I just filter by sentence set to start off with, you can see all of the sentence sets there. And to start off with, we're going to do my favorite things. OK, so the way this is set up is I've got on on each page of the clicker set, there's enough words for me to create a single sentence. OK, and there's also a picture so I can send up the picture and I would write my favorite color is orange. Now, if I wasn't very sure, because my first language is not English, I'm not very confident to rearrange that vocab. What I could do is have a listen to it. So the little green button there is going to give me a spoken model. My favourite colour is orange. OK, so I can hear that and then I'm going to create it. If I can't read a word, I can right click and listen to it. Favourite. OK, my favourite. Now, if you're on an iPad, you might think, well, how do I right click? Because on an iPad, I'm not normally using a mouse. Um, but there's a little button there called a sound shift button, which performs that same function. Colour. OK, my favourite colour is orange. And then when I punctuate, and for those that are new to Clicker, you're going to like this, um, Clicker will respond when I put my full stop in. My favourite colour is orange. So, of course, I can actually listen back to that sentence and compare it to... My favourite colour is orange. And know that in this case, um, I've got it correct. And then, of course, I move on to the next sentence, etc. I think some children may still find that a little difficult. Can you find? Can you um, change that activity to make it any simpler? Yeah, sure. So um, we've at the moment got a spoken model on this. Let me just clear the decks. So um, you can change anything um, in Clicker by going into um, going into Edit View. So if we go to Clicker Set and Edit, what that allows us to do. Oh, I've just got a little window here. I need to just close out away. Sorry got a zoom window that's persisting and won't disappear there we go so um 
what we got what we've got here is a, 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 a listen model a spoken model so we could change that to view and copy if we wanted um or even view and remember let's start with view and remember that's a little bit more that's a little bit more tricky so um I do apologize. It's the uh, this zoom window is right over where I'm trying to where I'm trying to click on the screen. Let's move that out of the way. OK, and we just love technology. <laughs> ah, oh, don't we just. OK, so um, so if I come out of edit view now. So um, now when I click on the green button, instead of hearing the, the the sentence, I can see the sentence. I could listen to it as well by clicking on it. But notice that the actual words at the bottom of the screen are grayed out. So I can't so I can't access them. Now, if that's still too difficult, you can do view and copy. And in that case, we've we've actually got it visible all the time. So I can now copy that sentence. You can go one step further, and that is by changing the order. So we've got it in random order at the moment. What we could do is put it in what we call guided order. OK, there are other options, but these are probably the main ones you'd use. Uh, and in this case, I literally cannot get it wrong, because if I try and click on favorite, it doesn't do anything. So I go my now i now favorite lights up my favorite food is pizza there we go my favorite food is pizza look at that differentiation with a few very simple clicks i love it <laughs> okay so what i said was that there are the, there are different types of um writing grids and of course you can use these on the on clicker writer on the ipad and you can use them in clicker eight on the computers i'm doing now and the next type of writing grid that we're going to look at is something called a connect set okay so if i take the filter off sentence sets and put it onto connect sets instead you'll see we've now got a whole page full of of these connect sets and they're color coded orange so it's easy for us to find them and uh, right at the bottom we'll go for that one so it's the same theme my favorite things okay but now you can see this is the the next level up ah oh, so now the learner has to pick and choose from different words and different phrases Exactly. So, um, you know, on, on the previous one, there was only one word, only one sentence per page, whereas here we've got lots of lots of more choices. So it's so it's, it's starting to stretch them a little more. OK, so um, what we're going to do now is perhaps um, head towards um, a, a grammatical exercise. Let's have a look at some sentence patterns. OK, so. If we go um, back to our learning grids and go to English, OK, I'll clear, clear off the previous search and you'll see in grammar, there's various sections here, including sentence grammar. OK, and within that, we have lots and lots of activities again. And the one that um, the one that I'm actually going to do is uh, I like sentence patterns. OK, so this is, again, a sentence set. And on each page, you've got a very simple sentence. I like books. And the next one, I like sport, etc. So I think I like this activity because of the repetition. The repetition is really good for modeling for English language learners. Basically, they are learning the structure, but only changing one part at a time. OK, now. Part of Clicker is, of course, it's word processing facility. We've always already seen that when we put a sentence in, it will read that sentence back to us. And as um, our English language learners become more confident um, in their abilities, they might start um, actually doing some, some typing with the keyboard as opposed to necessarily relying on word banks and writing frames at the bottom of the screen. And one of the uh, support facilities that we've got within Clicker is a prediction tool. Uh, and that can help us if we've got um, maybe if we're going to, um, you know, we, we need a bit of help with our grammar. If I was going to get a sentence wrong, like we was going swimming, if I type in we, look, it gives me were, but not was. Whereas if I change it to I, then it's going to give me was. Now, it's not going to stop me typing the wrong thing, but the predictor is going to guide me in choices that are more likely to make grammatical sense in the context of the sentence that I'm writing. I've heard um, quite often people say to me that prediction is a form of cheating and that it removes that independent thought. However, I feel that from research and experience, giving children different vocabulary actually supports them to develop. 
Um, it, how do we expect children to develop language if it's not readily available to them? And this tool really does make that happen. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things I'd say there. So, so certainly, I'd agree with you. The research is that if you expose children to a wider range of correctly spelled vocabulary, then they tend to improve um, their own levels of vocabulary. But also, what Clicker's doing and the support that it's giving is what we do as teachers. We give that appropriate scaffolding, and then as the child becomes more confident, we then remove that scaffolding and they're able to, to be successful. Right. But, um, OK, so let's um, let's let's have a look at a talk. We haven't looked at a talking book yet. And um, books are a great part of Clicker. And what we're going to do is look at um, a book now, which is going to help us with some verbs. So still sticking with grammar for the moment. Let's look at verbs. OK. And um, within here, we've got um, various books. Now, there's books you can actually make your own books. But I'm just going to start with a reading book. And this is Present, Past and Future Read a Book. OK, so on this one, OK, we've got walk. I am walking to school. Yesterday I walked to school and tomorrow I will walk to school. And the child could practice reading that themselves or they can press the button and have that read back to them. Now, from that activity, we would then go on to perhaps get the child to, doing some write, to do some writing. So one of the things that we talked about was um, the fact that you've got make a book activities there as well. OK, so they could rewrite their own book. OK, or what we could perhaps do is use um, one of these uh, one of these uh, connect sets here. So we've got verb tenses, uh, present, past and future. Um, Let's, yeah, let's have a little look at that one. Okay, so there we can go every day, she, and then we have to pick pick out um, what, which words and phrases will match together so that you get that, um, so you get that agreement with the, the subject verb and the subject verb agreement. Okay, sorry, did you want to? That, yeah, that covers all the grammar then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so, so let's move on from let's move on from grammar now. I mean, there are lots and lots of activities to explore, and I know that many of you who've joined this webinar have got have got Clicker already. And I certainly recommend spending some time having a look at some of those different activities. There are all sorts of different approaches to this. If they're struggling with subject verb agreement, there's a specific subject verb agreement connect set there. Um, there's there's a whole wealth of activities um, on on grammar. But we're going to move on now, and we're looking and we're going to look now about uh, at, at sort of the general topic of vocabulary and how we go about um, expanding vocabulary. So the first one I'm going to do, and just and just to show you, if you know what you're looking for, um, you know, it's an activity you've used before, you can just search in Learning Grids using this search bar at the top. So I'm just going to look for expanding sentences, and I'm going to use this expanding sentences connect set. Now this one, we start with a really simple sentence, the dog barked. The dog barked. OK, but now what we're going to do is we're going to improve that sentence. So we're going to say the huge dog ferociously barked at the children. The huge dog ferociously barked at the children. OK, so that's one way that we can use Clicker to expand um, to expand the vocabulary. In this case, we're giving the child a sentence and say, make this sentence better. Now, as they're progressing in their in their English language learning, then what we what we might find is that they um, that, that we need to encourage them to use a wider range of vocab. And there's lots of learning grids that are good for that. So. Um, True story, when I was a teacher, uh, I had a pet hate, and uh, my pet hate was the word nice. I couldn't bear that being used in any work that was handed in to me. So what we've got here is a bank that's going to help with that one called Alternative Adjectives. OK, so um, let's open this one. And you can see now, instead of big, little, good, bad, happy, sad, and the awful, nasty and nice, we there, we've now got a range of much more interesting vocabulary to use. I think this is a really great way to stop learners from using that safe vocabulary. Um, the words to choose from really push learners and takes them out of their comfort zone. Love it. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what typically happens. You, got, you start to gain some experience in English, but then you, you kind of settle into the words that you're comfortable with. So, so this is a way of kind of pushing you on to, to learn a wider range of vocab. So, so that's, those are just a couple of ways that you might approach more general vocab. But what about topic specific vocabulary? So certainly as they're getting older, they're progressing through the school. Um, the English has gone beyond just the sort of day to day high frequency words. They now need to understand how to use topic specific vocabulary. So I think we'll we'll move away now from from uh, we, we've just stuck in the English section so far. Let's go into something else. So I'm going to pick we'll go for science. OK, so we've got lots and lots of really high quality science materials here. OK, and we'll pick living world saying let's do evolution. OK, so if I pick evolution, you'll see there's a whole bank and um, a whole set of different um, resources here. I'm going to start off with a word bank. I'm going to start off with evolution quick words. So what so here you've just got one page with some keywords on. I like these simple grids where they are topic specific, because as an early writer, the students then have easy access to all the main keywords and phrases that help them put together sentences and um, paragraphs. Brilliant. OK, so look, the next level up is also a word bank. In fact, I'm going to be showing you three different word banks here. But this next one is called Adaptation, Inheritance and Evolution. And what you can see is that there's a separate tab for each of those subtopics. I think um, this helps with structure and content, doesn't it? So it guides them to appropriate vocabulary depending on the subtopics within that overarching topic. I think this allows students to grow and develop, again, the sentences, the paragraphs, um, all within topic-based umbrellas. Love it. And I think what this particularly helps with is what you might describe as blank page syndrome. Teacher says, Write, write about inheritance. Well, where on earth do I start? Well, what I can do is click on the inheritance tab of this word bank, and I've immediately got some ideas of words that I should be using, and that was going to help help me kick off and start start writing start writing about inheritance in this case. Okay, and then the the last one of these that we're just going to look at um, briefly is what we call one of our A to Z. Uh, word bank. So adaptation, inheritance and evolution, A to Z. So here you can see that the words are now scattered across uh, an A to Z word bank. So through that, you have three different levels of support, don't you? You have the topic then you have the three subtopics within the major topic, but then you pair right back. So it's, it's um, enabling children to think, what word do I want to use? I know it begins with H. I can't think, I can't think. They can go here and find it much e much easier and i love i just like the tiered support that it gives yeah and i think you know if you've got a child that um you know, maybe they're, they're struggling with spending some words but they've got a good idea about when they're writing about say inheritance what words they want you're providing them an additional level of challenge by giving them that a to z vocab and they're going to have to go and find the word rather than perhaps being more directed um but yeah i think this leads us um really nicely into the last, oh, I use the word nice, <laughs> leads us really well into, into the final section we're on differentiation, because that is a clear um, example of how you can use Clicker to differentiate. And of course, um, depending on the range of abilities in the class, we might at the same time as using those three word banks also be using sentence sets and connect sets. But I'm going to finish off just by picking a topic and just talking about how we might use that um, to deliver a lesson to a whole class, which has children who are English language learners at different levels. There might be other children with special needs in that class. There might also be, at the other end, some high flyers that need challenging. OK, so to, do, to, to give you um, kind of put this in some sort of context, let's go to Story Corner and in Story Corner, we've got lots of uh, lots of traditional stories, fables and world stories, myths and legends, etc. Got lots of stories. But the brilliant thing about them is it isn't just the stories. You've got a full range of differentiated activities. So going back to what Louise was saying at the start of the webinar, it's a real challenge and it's very 
it's very time consuming for teachers and teaching assistants creating this differentiated content so that we can deal with um, all manner of needs, including those who've, who don't speak English their first language within the classroom. So I'm going to pick King Midas and the Golden Touch. And, and the first thing that we're going to look at is the reader book. So as a teacher in this class, I would probably open this up and this is the full version of the book. So each page has several sentences on it. OK, it's the full version of the story and we could use that to introduce it to the class. OK, now some children could then because Clicker Books is coming out later this month, some children will then be able to load that up onto their iPads and Chromebooks and and read that for themselves or have some help because there is a button that will read it for for you or you can just get if you're stuck on individual words immediately you can just click on the words you're stuck on and that can help with your reading fluency but if I'm new to English that might be too hard for me so what we've also included for you is a read it yourself version so now we've got one sentence per page really just simplifies the story it bridges it down to the key facts and that allows even those who are less confident in their reading skills um, to successfully read the story independently then we've got a whole range of resources um, that go with it so we've got the talk sets which work really well with a talk for writing approach and the whole idea that if we tell if we can tell the story out loud we're much more likely to then be successful at writing it okay and we've got sentence sets connect sets remember those are the sort of the earlier activities and then as they become and then as we're working with children that are perhaps more confident we've got the quick words we've got the a to z and even um, our answer to, uh, to to printing out loads of worksheets we've got um, golden touch questions where you've got uh, a question and then um, some words to help you answer it okay um, finally the last activity which I would finish off with this class is that they then get to write the book themselves so here we can do King Midas and the Golden Touch by Phil um, I can click in the picture and choose the right picture to start and I can click into the text here and um, we could then uh, use the word bank to help us with uh, with the content. So there you go, um, a fully differentiated activity. <laughs> Absolutely. So this just provides, so you've got one topic, every child needs to access that book. In this example, is Kin Midas. And yet every activity can be differentiated. Children can be accessing at all different levels within the same class or on the same table, accessing what they need in order to learn and develop and grow on their topic, but all having that same conversation about King Midas. Brilliant. Well, oh, look, Louise, <laughs> well, Louise, thank you very much indeed um, for joining us. And I'd like to thank everyone um, who, um, who's, who's watched this um, webinar. There's a huge number of you joined the, um, this webinar. I'm very grateful for you to spend the time with us talking about Clicker. So what we're going to be doing in the next couple of days is sending you out the details on how you can access the recording. So, of course, you might want to refer back to this. If you're already users of Clicker, you might want to use some of these ideas um, with with, with, with the classes that you teach. And also for those schools that haven't already got Clicker, there's going to be some information coming out on how you can find out more about getting Clicker in your school. Um, but that's it from me. Thank you very much indeed for all your attention. Thanks again to Louise and uh, goodbye. Thank you.